Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. Stay tuned until the end for a special offer. Hi everyone. Today I have a brand new oil painting tutorial for you all. Real quick before I begin, I just wanted to let you all know that I'm having a holiday sale in my shop. So if you want to pick up any art gifts for your loved ones or just to treat yourself, you can get 20% off at happyd-artist.com with the code holiday sale. Okay, back to the tutorial. I'm gonna show you how I created this oil painting and how I mixed all of the skin tones using only three colors plus black and white. For supplies, I used oil paints, mostly from Gamblin, some brushes from Trakel, a gesso primed hardboard panel from Trakel, a silly coil jar for cleaning my brushes, a heavy duty paper towel, and palette paper for mixing my paint. For easier paint mixing, I used this small palette knife, although you can also use your brushes if you prefer. To thin my paint and clean my brushes, I'm using Gamsol from Gamblin, which is my favorite odorless mineral spirits. And this is my favorite slow drying medium from Gamblin called Galkid Gel, which makes the paint easier to work with, but it's not required for this tutorial. And you can find all of today's art supplies in the video description. The colors I'll be using today are Titanium White from Gamblin, Chromatic Black from Gamblin, Cadmium Red Medium from Gamblin, Cadmium Yellow Medium from Williamsburg, and Thalo Blue from Gamblin. And I'll just refer to the colors as white, black, red, yellow, and blue to be concise. Instead of trying to predict and prepare every single color I will need, which is impossible, I prefer to just pre-mix a handful of essential colors that will be good starting points to mix on the go, since the painting process for me is somewhat improvisational. I always start with a light gray to help desaturate my colors later on, as I prefer a more muted, subtle palette, since oversaturated skin tones to me look less natural. Next, starting with the three primary colors, I created some secondary colors such as orange and green, and then from those secondary colors, I mixed three different shades of skin tones, including a dark brown for shadows, a peachy beige mid-tone, and a rosier pink mid-tone. I also have a lavenderish red for lips and blush, as well as a light pastel sky blue for the highlights. Also, I uploaded a more in-depth color mixing demo in a full 60-minute tutorial video to my Patreon. You can find this longer tutorial video along with hundreds of hours of exclusive content and rewards at patreon.com slash happydartist. Okay, on to the painting demo. I'm currently using the light gray color to sketch out the composition of the piece and lay out where I want all of the elements to be. The light gray color, which is made with a lot of white and a tiny drop of black, is great for underpaintings because it can be easily covered up in future layers, and since I usually end up desaturating most of my colors for skin tones anyway, I don't have to worry about the light gray mixing with any future colors that I lay on top of it. To make sure the paint is easy to spread and also to ensure a fast drying time, I'm loading up my brush with a decent amount of Gamsol before loading up the oil paint. Next, it's time to start putting down some colors. Instead of rendering any more details in the monochromatic stage, I jump straight into color blocking for my first layer. I know not every tutorial might start off this way, and I know some artists prefer to establish the values first before introducing different colors, but lately I've preferred to render the values and colors in congruence so that I can have better control over the overall painting. For faces and portraits, I like to lay down my most dramatic features first, such as the red blushing cheeks, lips, and nose, the blue eyes, and I also use pure black paint for the parts of the face that are most significant in portraying expressions, such as the pupils of the eyes, the lash lines, and the dark shadows of the nostrils and between the lips. I also like to leave some room for where I think the highlights are going to be, such as the tip of the nose, the iris of the eyes, and the bottom lip. Starting off with the darkest and lightest values right off the bat helps me establish a visual anchor because I can see both ends of the spectrum of values, from lightest to darkest, which makes it easier for me to build all of the midtones in between. This first color blocking layer isn't intended to be polished, but it still serves as a useful foundation for future layers. 
The way I paint usually involves at least a few layers, with each new layer providing smoother blending and more refinement in the details. I don't put too much pressure on myself to get each brush stroke perfect, because I know that I will be building upon it as I add more layers to the piece. And even if I make a mistake, there's a lot of wiggle room to paint over and correct the mistake. Oil painting is actually quite an easy medium to work with if you approach it with this mindset, that nothing is permanent and nothing has to be perfect on the first try. Instead, it's a never-ending journey of slowly tweaking and refining things until you eventually get them to look the way you want. Okay, now we're at the second layer. I had given the first layer about three days drying time, but it still wasn't perfectly dry by the time I started working on the second layer, which isn't a big deal as long as you use very light pressure on your brush strokes and also make sure to thoroughly wipe your brush clean and dry of any paint thinner before you load up the oil paint. I actually used the same set of colors for my second layer as I did for the first. And even though the colors don't look any different on my palette, they will still have a significant effect on my painting because the more layers of paint I apply, the more of the painting surface I will cover up. So I always notice that my second layer will look a lot darker than my first layer because now there's less of the white panel showing up underneath. Also now, I am really trying to breathe life into the subject, and a major tip for that is to try to incorporate colors into the skin tone that you might not initially think belong there. For example, with a naked eye, we may not see any blues or greens in human skin, but mixing a bit of those colors into parts of the skin tones actually helps the subject look more human. If everything is in the warm beige family, the subject will tend to look a bit flat and dull. So having a mixture of cool tones and warm tones will make the subject feel more alive and realistic, even if the proportions are stylized and exaggerated like mine. I usually prefer to add a bit of the blue into the darkest shadows as well as the highlights, while keeping the midtones warmer. To gray out some of the oversaturated colors in a natural way, I like to mix different shades of reds with different shades of green. A vibrant red and a darker green will create a rich dark brown, but a light pink and a pastel earthy green can generate some beautiful subtle beiges. I also like to reserve some areas for a pop of color to bring some vibrance to the character, particularly where there's a stark contrast between dark and light values, such as where the dark eyebrows touch the light skin. I will sprinkle in some red tones there to bring some balance from the rosy cheeks and also to make the transition between the lights and darks a little more elegant and cohesive. Overall, this piece has taught me that three primary colors is definitely sufficient to mix all the skin tones I will need. And lately, I've actually been enjoying the challenge of limiting my color palette. Not only does it force me to hone my color mixing skills, but I think it's also beneficial to show everyone that you can accomplish a lot without needing a huge, expensive collection of art supplies. Starting with just the three primary colors, in some ways, was more straightforward than having a wide array of pre-mixed colors straight out of the tube. When you only have red, yellow, and blue to work with, there isn't a whole lot of decision making involved. If I want something to be rosier, I add more red. If I want to cool down a color, I add more blue. And if I want a color to be warmer, I could sprinkle in some yellow. As the video wraps up, the final piece of advice I want to leave you with is to think about not just each individual color, but the relationship between colors. A color can have a very different effect depending on its surroundings. For example, placing a cooler section next to a warmer section will bring some much needed contrast so that the face doesn't look too washed out. Placing a little pop of saturation among a wider expanse of more muted colors will bring the focal point to that colorful spot. Skin tones are one of my most highly requested tutorial topics, and it's probably also one of the most challenging topics, especially for a beginner painter. But with the right amount of patience and practice, it can be a highly rewarding and fun experience that only requires three colors. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video was able to help you get a bit more comfortable with painting skin tones. And if you're interested in learning more about how to paint and draw, I have lots of art educational content on my Patreon page, including exclusive video tutorials, step-by-step -step photo tutorials, live streams, podcasts, and even surprise art gift boxes. 
all available at patreon.com slash happy d artist i'd love to have you join my patreon family i wanted to quickly thank squarespace for sponsoring this video and for supporting my channel and the art community i've actually enjoyed using squarespace for four years now to build and host my online shop and website so whether you need a domain website or online store Make your next move with Squarespace. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and visit squarespace.com slash happydartist for 10% off your first purchase. Also, if you want to check out more artworks, works in progress, and just random daily artist adventures, feel free to check out my Instagram and you can follow me at the handle at happydartist.